All right. I hope you guys are excited this morning. You know, we're, we're closing, coming to the end of the year. Uh, and you know, sometimes for people that don't really go to church, this is a period when they start coming. And, and um, that ought not to be the case. You know, we should always be looking excited to go to church. So, um, but yeah, generally at the end of the year as well, we have this time of rest. You know, everyone's having holidays. I know a lot of trainees usually take it at the end of December. And so, you know, that, that period where we have this kind of resting moment, we're resting mind, where we're already on holy, holiday mode at the beginning of December. And so I was going to speak on this about, and I will give you rest, that Jesus Christ will give us rest. All right, so as we read in Matthew uh, 11, I did want to um, use Matthew 20, starting from verse 25 onwards, but we'll recap the, the chapter leading up to this. But the first point I did want to mention is that we are to pray without ceasing, which we'll see soon. But let's jump back and just quickly recap the chapter and uh, leading up to what we are, just to get a context. But basically, uh, Jesus Christ, um, sorry, John the, John the Baptist in, in prison, you know, someone that uh, baptized people in the name of Christ, you know, he, he spake unto the people that they were to believe on Jesus Christ, uh, which is to come after him, right? And John the Baptist even baptized Jesus Christ. So this guy... This man, um, as Jesus said, he was greater than all men born. You know, he, although he did a great work for God, he was put in prison. And you can imagine what he's thinking like, and that's why he says here in verse 2, oh, sorry, three, 3, art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? You know, you've served God, and sometimes, you know, for him, for John the Baptist, it didn't work out. And he's thinking like, I've preached, in this guy, I've preached for this guy, I baptized him, I was baptizing people in his name. And now I'm in jail, and that's why probably I'm thinking, why he's thinking, art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? But then Jesus goes on to say, well, uh, and, and uh, to tell his disciples to go back to him and say, you know, these things have been done, you know? And then he, he speaks well of uh, John the Baptist. So then he continues on, and he starts uh, um, preaching and speaking against, you know, these cities as we jump down. Uh, in verse 21, Woe unto thee, Chorazin, and Bethsaida, Tyre, and Sidon. See, God, Jesus Christ, is now uh, speaking against these cities. And uh, that he's done many works there, and they haven't repented. They haven't turned to God, as it says there in this verse. So now then we jump back to where we are in verse 25. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth. So the point I want to mention is that... Um, Pray without ceasing. So just as Jesus, he sees these cities and uh, they haven't turned unto him. Uh, although many mighty works have done, they didn't turn. So Jesus now stops here in verse 25. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father. So now he's praying. He's coming to this moment of prayer. And so in our time of this uh, Christmas time, you know, the end of the year, we all think of, um, we, in that holiday mode, we just think of family, friends, partyings, you know, God not ought to be the time where you think you forget about Him. You know, this is a time, especially Christmas time, um, that we should think about God more so. That should stir you up. But if you haven't had a time of prayer, you don't have a a, a schedule of prayer, you don't have a plan of prayer. You know, it ought to be good that you, you start getting into the habit of prayer. Uh, and you know, I learned this from this saying that I thought it was cheesy at the time in my old church. There's this uh, a good man that I liked, but he always said, if you don't. Uh, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So, as the Bible says, pray without ceasing. We always pray, even in this holiday time. Let's not zone out. Let's continue reading, but mostly, and also praying. You know, sometimes when you have a day off of work, you just get a bit lazy. You just want to lounge around. But no, let's pray. Pray without ceasing, as the Bible says. First Thessalonians 5.17. And let's have a habit. And so, yeah, if you, if you uh, fail to plan, you plan to fail. And see here in Daniel 6, is a very popular story. Um, about Daniel praying three times. Let's read this quickly. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes, the counselors and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for 30 days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, established the, the decree and signed the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore, the king Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and, he op and his windows being opened in his chamber towards Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God 
as he did aforetime. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. So we see here Daniel praying three times, and it says at the end of verse 10, as he did aforetime. So he continued, he stayed consistent. And so this time, at the end of the year, let's continue in prayer. And if you haven't, if you don't have a, a habit of praying, uh, get into a habit of praying. You know, that's why if you, if you don't know how to pray, we've made this simple prayer list. We have it out every week, out on the table there. You know, just go through it in the morning, in the afternoon, in the night. You know, just go spend 10 minutes in the morning. To, when you wake up, you know, that should be one of the first things you do. Like, you just start thanking God. Like, God, I thank you for this day. Thank you that your mercies are new every morning. And you start talking to God. You know, you should start the morning that way. And have that minor prayer during this Christmas time or this time where you're in a, in a rest time and in holiday mode. Don't. Uh, stop praying. Always be in prayer. Alright, so let's continue on to the next point. Reflect on God. Um, reflect on God as we come to this time of the year. Always reflect on God. It's a bit easier in Christmas. It's a bit hard to... Uh, I guess in, nowadays it's, it's all about Christmas and, and sorry, presents and family. But remember that we, are, as Christians, we acknowledge the birth of Christ. Although He may not have been born on December 25, we... Um, no, as Christians, that he came to seek and to save that which is lost, right? So always reflect on God in this time. It says here, at that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, O Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for, it for so it seemed good in thy sight. So the point I wanted to draw is uh, because thou hast hid these things, Jesus now is reflecting on what God is doing and uh, how God operates and so we ought to reflect on how God is working in our lives and always think about if, no matter what point of you are in your life spiritually um, always try to reflect on God come back to that moment of reflection as Jesus is doing, doing here you know because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and in, in this reflection you know it's in a sense there's always that theme in the Bible where God is uh, resisting the proud or the, the, uh, the haughty spirit the people that are pride and hard-hearted you know, God always has a hard time with them. You know, uh, and many times you think of Pharaoh, um, that his heart was hardened, God did, couldn't work with him. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar, same thing, that his heart was hardened. And we ought not to be like that as Christians. If we reflect on God, we ought not to be like that. And sometimes, you know, we are, we have that mind where we know, I know what the Bible says, I've been a Christian for so long, uh, I don't need to hear from you, I don't need to... Um, read the Bible, I already know the Bible. They all ha you all have that mindset, but no, we all always have to have the mindset that of uh, being humble and lowly. It says this in 1 Corinthians 1, because the foolishness of, of, the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and the God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in His presence. Mm. So Amen. many times as Christians, we, especially when you're doing a lot of work for God, you have that mindset where, you know, I already know, I've already done these things. But you always not to have that case. You always be humble. Always be ready. Always be open to what God has to hear. And uh, we're not not to be like this. And that's like the Pharisees and the Sadducees in the Bible. You know, many times they're, they're speaking against God, but God is, Jesus Christ is always rebuking them that they don't know the Scriptures. Right? They think that they know the Word of God, but it says, hey, have you not read? Or is it not written? Jesus Christ many says that many times in the Bible. And, you know, sometimes we have that attitude of the Pharisees and the Sadducees that we think we know God's Word and we're not humble to it. That's why we, sometimes we don't read it or sometimes we, we miss church. We ought not to be the case. You know, God always uses the humble and the lowly. Let's not be like that. And it um, says this in Proverbs 16, 18. Pride goeth before destruction and an haughty spirit before a fall. You know, um, maybe some of us are sports fans, right? You, especially mixed martial arts has taken a rise in the last decade. And I was on this rabbit hole for a while, uh, a couple of weeks back, where um, you know you hear that you see the, the titles that, uh, on these highlights of uh, mixed martial arts fighters that um, you know the the cocky fighters get humbled. You know the ones that, that dance around in the party. You think of um, um, John Jones and and all those people. And there's a, there's clips where you see uh, one some people like they're dancing around. They take a few jabs and a hit, and they're actually winning the fight. 
And then, um, there's, yeah, there's one fighter I, saw, I was watching that one guy was like jabbing, and every time he'd kick the guy and land a clean hit, he'd start dancing. He'd like look around and start dancing. And you know what? The third round of that fight, you know, he did that same thing. He started, he kicked the guy uh, on the chest, on the arm of this area, and he started like looking around, pretending to dance and do like a little wiggle. And then the guy that was actually losing, he actually just landed a kick on his face and he got knocked out. And, you know, and then you see the comments in that, like, oh man, he should have hit him more because he started going ground and pound at him. And that's sort of what we're like as Christians. You know, we think we're, we, have it all, we have it all together. We know what God, we know about God, but really that's just pride goes before destruction. And, and later on, before you even know it, you're far away from God. Your heart's far from Him. So we're not, we ought not to be like that. And um, especially if we're Christians for a long time, it says this in Hebrews 5.11, of whom we have heard many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing, for when the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are full of age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So here we have, you know, um, Paul is speaking about Christ in early in Hebrews, um, but he's telling people that they ought to be teachers already. This is a time that you, you've been a Christian for so long, seeing your, your, your ears are dull of hearing, for, your, for, when, uh, for the time you ought to be teachers. Some of us have been saved, you know, five years now or, long, or longer. If you've been a Christian for so long and you haven't read your Bible once, once through, you know, that ought to be a shame to us. You know, that, that's, that should be something that, you know, I've read the Bible, Genesis to Revelation, all the way through. Mm. And that we ought to be teachers as well. You know, um, so the Bible does say um, that we ought to know the scriptures, for when the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. If we've been Christians for so long here, uh, I know when some of us have been here since Punch Bowl. And we've, we've lost that, you know, fight in us in terms of preaching. Let's get back into it. You know, we, we are not to be Amen. the ones being taught to. We're the ones that should be as men rising up, preaching and teaching, especially to our kids. And even, your, even the ladies here, you know, do your, do your children know the Word of God? Or do you know the Word of God yourself? You know, it's time to get back into God and uh, to learn the basics of um, Christ. Getting our gear into it. And we ought to be, as long-time Christians, teachers. And we have that mindset. And uh, even for our kids, you know, we ought to train them young to start teaching and, and to preaching the God's word that they also won't fall like how, uh, how we get lazy and uh, not to teach, right? So we ought to be um, teachers and um, not to, to go to the ones that useth milk, right? So we should, we should know. It says this in 1 Corinthians 10, Wherefore, let him that stand, uh, thinketh that he standeth take heed, lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. So as a Christian, don't ever think that you've got it all kept together. Always know that God always works with the lowly, the humble, the meek. I always reflect on God this time of the year. Maybe 2023, you haven't done anything much spiritually. Make 2024 the, the year that you come back to God. And be humble, just go back to him and to start um, becoming a godly Christian. All right, so let's go to the next point. Matthew 11, back to the main text. Um, At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent and hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. So, verse 26 is what I want to draw from that sometimes, you know, life, in, uh, way in your life, that uh, things don't go your way. When we read earlier in Matthew 11, you know, Jesus is uh, rebuking these cities, that mighty works were done there, and sometimes you're working hard and then things just don't go your way. You know, you're like, God, I'm serving you. God, I'm working hard. Why isn't this happening? Why isn't it what I think should be happening is happening? You know, I thought, I thought you'll guide us and that being a servant of you, that you'll help us. And so in this case, you know, Jesus is uh, making that sense. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. And uh, just, like, just like Jesus Christ, you know, we have to submit to the will of God and how things are going to play with the cards that are dealt with us. Luke 22, before Jesus Christ was going to die on the cross, right? Um, he, always, he obviously prayed. Um, Jesus says, and he went and he came out and went as, as he was wont, 
to the Mount of Olives and his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast away and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, strengthening him. I remember verse 43 later, I'll come back to that. But here we have Jesus Christ submitting to God's will. That he was obviously in the, in the form of man, he, was, he knew what was going to come, that he was going to be bruised and broken for our iniquities. And that's why he's praying this, you know, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. But we have to submit to um, what God has allowed, you know, all these things that happen. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. So continue working hard. If you're, if you're steadfast in the faith, you know, don't, don't let up. Even though times are hard, times are troubling, you know, God knows, God sees. And so just let, let it go and you'll see that one day God will, will pull through. Just not the way we see, sometimes just not the way we see, it's not the, sometimes the way we think, right? So that's just how God is. And um, actually it shows, some, and most times in many cases, it's always better at the end. All right, so I know we've gone through the Acts series and this is the one that I wanted to bring back to in Acts 14:27. Uh, and when they were come and had gathered that, the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. And if you remember when we were going through this in Acts 14, um, it says at the end of the verse how he opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. But sometimes when you, as, as Christians, you know, God, open the door, help me through this. You know, close this door, open that door. Help me find another job. Help me through this financial situation. You know, sometimes that door is not easy, as we saw with Paul. You know, they had to go through with much tribulation uh, to preach the gospel to the Gentiles, basically. And through Acts, you know, he's getting beaten, he's getting, he's getting shipwrecked, and um, stones, he's getting, um, I mean, people thought that he, would, he was dead at one point when they stoned him. You know, this is what Paul had to go through for that door of faith, you know, to be opened. So that's about how, how it is in the Christian life. It's not always easy. Uh, so we have troubles and, and trials. But we always continue working through. You know, we, have, we know God is there. Never forget that God is watching you. It says this in Psalm 37. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. So you know what? If you're, if you're serving God, if you know uh, what you're doing is right for God, it's ordered by the Lord. And He upholdeth you with His hand. So never let up. Always continue serving the God. Always continue serving God. Uh, I have this verse here. I actually deleted this. Um, sorry, let's skip. thought I got rid of that in this. Let's continue on to the next point. Matthew eleven twenty seven. 27. The, the, all things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father, Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son revealeth. So, uh, this isn't really too related to the topic I wanted to say in terms of, you know, in this Christmas time, in this time of the year where we're resting and having that mindset. Um, but I guess what I, while we're here, I just quickly want to address that. Uh, you have this thing in the Bible, you always see God the Father and God the Son working together, and God the Father and God in the Son. And so we see, uh, we'll just quickly go through a few verses in John 1, 18. No man hath seen the Father at any time, the only begotten Son, which is the, in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. So no one has seen Jesus, uh, God the Son. Uh, John 6, 46. No man has seen the Father, save he which is of God. He, that, uh, he hath seen the Father. But then now we have in John 14, uh, if you remember in the story, in Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet have, have, uh, hast that not know, known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. So we have this theme always in the Bible. We see that no man has seen the Father, no man has seen the Son. But if you've seen the Son, you've seen the Father. Right? Thanks, mm -hmm. thanks to God. By faith, we see Him. So as this in, in terms of seeing, but this one is about His hand. Uh, John 10, 28 to 30. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. So we have here Jesus. If you're saved, 
you're saved once forever. Right? And this is one of those uh, passages we can go to. That no man shall pluck, uh, be plucked out of Jesus' hand. But he also refers to his Father's hand in verse 29. So they're the same hand. Because I and my Father are one. Right? So that's verse 27. Let's continue on to the next point. That we are to submit to God. We to submit to God. So we pray, we reflect what God is and what, he does, what He's done. But in this point, we uh, reflect, uh, sorry, submit to God. Uh, verse 28. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So the point, I want to, the, verse, the point of that verse I want to draw to is, come unto me. So the first thing you want to do is that we go to Jesus first. And this time it's not, um, you know, holiday season where we, we're looking forward to spending time with family, the presents as kids. You know, every, when I was younger, when we got like a, I'm not, I'm not sure how old you guys are, and, um, or if you've ever had a Nintendo 64. You know, when, when I was a bit younger, at Christmas time, uh, my brothers and I, we got a Nintendo 64. We were so excited. I was like looking forward to that every day. But you know, this Christmas time, you know, we've got to go to Jesus first. Put, put God first and um, nothing else. You know, if you, if you think about the Ten Commandments, it's always been summed up in two things, right? Uh, the first one is always to love God. And the second part, the way it's summed up is to love your neighbor as yourself. You know, so the first commandment, love God. Love God. So we come unto Him. We're always thinking about Him. Come unto Jesus. All right, so Luke 10, let's read this. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house and she had a sister called Mary which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not, not care that my sister hath left me alone to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she come help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful and Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Uh, for so, if you're a Christian that's serving God for a while, you sometimes get uh, weary in well-doing. That not ought to be the case. Maybe it's time where you become, uh, when you're working so hard, and you you become servant, uh, servant to the routine, rather than figuring out who you're serving to. You know, you're always doing things out of routine, and you sort of lost way. You know why you're doing it, and it's, and this is what I can draw from Luke 10. You know. Martha, he's just working hard already. She's, Jesus Christ has come into the house. And, you know, if Christ came into your house, you know, you want to make it look nice, right? You want to hide away, you know, the, the dirty laundry. You want to hide, you know, the things that are hanging out of the closets and all that. You want to put the toys away. And that's for, sort of what Mar Martha's doing. You know, she's always trying to make, uh, making her household, um, you know, looking nice and nice and to serve Jesus. You want to be a good um, host to your guest. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? You know, sometimes as Christians, when you work hard, you know, you like, you know, God, can you just get them people to, to help? And, you know, that might be the right uh, thing in her mindset to do, but never lose sight that you and your relationship with God is just as important as well. And sometimes it's time when you just sit at Jesus' feet and uh, just hear what he has to say rather than getting too too caught up in serving, too caught up into the routine, that you are forgetting yourself why you're doing it, and that's for Christ. Mm, amen. Right? So, and we see this in Hebrews 4, uh, seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace I'll find grace to help in time of need. So maybe you've been a Christian for a while now, but you've gone away from Christ. And, you know, you, you might think like, you know, is God going to help me now? Can God use me? Can God work with me? You know, I've been, I've been doing things for the world. I've been, I have no interest in the world, but I started wanting to get... Yes, you can. You know, no matter what point in life, uh, in life you are at, you know, God is always looking to, serve, uh, to work with you. You know, it's sort of like the, the prodigal son, where he received all the inheritance... And he wasted out in booze, in drinking, and partying, and revelings, and you know, with the with the women. And he wasted his substance. But God is like that father, where he's always waiting for that son to come back. So no matter how far you are in life, God is there. He's waiting for you. And then he'll return. He'll he will throw that party for you. And he comes back, when you come back to him. 
So we have this that we know that we can go back to God. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace. Boldly. You know, that you go back to Jesus Christ. You, you go back to God. No matter how far you are in life, you can come back to God. It says this in 1 John 1, 9, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So no matter how far you are in life, come to Jesus. You know, this Christmas time may be the time that you start reignite that fire again. You know, get back oh, to yeah. God. Yeah. Come unto me, as Jesus says. Come unto me. And um, so let's continue on. Matthew 20, eleven twenty nine. And take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. So if we think about it, um, this isn't really a passage that I would go to for soul winning, but you can, I guess, draw from, from this about, so, some, about salvation, that you take my yoke upon you, that Jesus Christ, it's his work that God has saved, right? You always see in the scriptures imputed righteousness, that God gives us his righteousness. We believe as Christians that God, Jesus Christ, is manifest. Uh, God manifest in the flesh. That He fulfilled all the law. All the law that was written by Moses. Every commandment written. Jesus Christ lived the perfect and sinless life. Um, and that He took upon our soul, uh, on Himself our sins. Right? And then when He died, He was buried and resurrected. He paid for all sin. So that's why you see, when you believe on Him, the Bible always refers it to that He imputes... His righteousness. It's not our righteousness. Our righteousness are as filthy rags. As Isaiah 64, 6 says that. But if we put our faith and trust in Christ, you know, He's imputed unto us His righteousness. And that's why when you're saved, you can't be saved by your works. You're saved because of Christ's work. Through His death, burial, and resurrection. And His fulfillment of the scriptures and, and the, the commandments. So that's why we see here in James 2, 23. And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. So impute is basically, if you think about it, like compute, where you're sending command, um, you know, things to the CPU, to your computing. All right, God, in our sense, in, in, imputing is God giving us, puting to us His righteousness. That we believed Him, that God is all what you did for us through your death, burial, and resurrection. You fulfilled the law. We're sinners. And, um, and once you believe on Him, the Bible says you are saved. It says this in Romans 4, 6, Even as David also describeth the blessedness of man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. So we cannot go to heaven. We cannot be saved without works or our own righteousness, but only through the righteousness of Christ, which is by faith. All right, so continue on. Uh, 2 Corinthians 6, in terms of yoke. Uh, what yoke is, obviously, I uh, forgot to mention this earlier. Yoke is where, when you think about, like uh, in the old times, when they were plowing, the, the oxes were plowing the ground, um, there was, you had like two oxen or maybe a couple more, but the yokes was always something that you put on their shoulders or on their necks and they plowed together. Mm. Right? So as Christians, um, it says here that we not to be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them, and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. So as Christians, we're not to, I know we ought to be in the world, but we're not of the world. You know, we, we, are, we have all responsibilities. Sometimes we have um, small communities and pockets that we're involved in. But, you know, we're not to be yoked up so much with Him more than the people of God. You know, we ought to have, uh, look forward to spending more time with Christians during the week than any other group of people. As Christians, we, are, we have to have that mindset. You know, during the week, I know that we, we only meet once a week. But, you know, as brothers and sisters in Christ, let's call up each other and say, Hey, you know, let's meet, hang out. Let's start going soul winning. Let's pray together. You know, let's not be yoked with the things of this world yeah. or the people of this world. <laughs> But, yeah, amen. you know, with Christians, we ought to find ourselves. And you know, that's the only way, really. You know, sometimes when you, when you group yourselves with friends of the world, you know, your, your work friends that, are, have, uh, that don't care or don't do anything, want to do anything with God, you know, sometimes it draws on your heart and your heart is drawn away. Yeah. You, know, you start thinking that's about right. the carnal yeah. things of this world. You start thinking about, you know, making your house, having, you know, building greater barns and you know, making yourself look, look good among your friends. But when you're surrounded with believers that are seeking God, 
They'd always challenge you, like, you know what, I need to know the Bible more. You know, let's pray. You're doing great work here. You know, let's continue doing that. You know, you always want to surround yourselves with Christians that are serving God. Amen. You know, and First Peter 2.9 uh, says this, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of his darkness, out of darkness into his marvelous light. And, um, and the last time I sang a song in the last sermon I did, so, and in this, there's a song for this as well in 1 Peter 2.9, and, um, and I like how the Bible says, you know, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. So, you know, I'll sing this song for you guys, because I think it's, I like this song. It's, it's always catchy when I always hear it with, with, my, with my family. It says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people. That you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness, out of darkness, out of darkness, into his marvelous light, into his marvelous light. I know I'm not a good singer, Amen. but man, that song, oh, to story, you know, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. You know, as Christians, we ought to be separate. You know, we are obviously in the world, but not of it. You know, surround yourselves with the people of God. All right, it says this in Matthew 6. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. So mammon is uh, obviously is money in the Bible in this sense. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much more? Be- uh, are you not much better than they? Which of you, to, by taking a thought, can add one cubit to his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall He not much more clothe you, ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or withal, withal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So in this passage, you know, God is saying all these things that the carnal things that we have, all the responsibilities, you know, what we're eating, what we're putting on, how we're taking our family. You know, if you're serving God. God's basically given us that, that uh, disclaimer that He's going to look after you. That if you seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, all of these things shall be added to you. So if work's getting in the way of your spiritual life, you know, maybe it's time to cut back and work and let God work through you. That, but, ye seek, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. You know, always go back to God first. And you know, all, the things that, all the carnal things of this world that you, you think you have responsibilities for, God will take care of you, right? So, as you see in this verse, you see, you go through all these things, uh, all the carnal things, you know, what we eat, what we drink, what we put on, God will take care of you. And if you're serving God, don't worry. You know, trust God, and He will come through. But yeah, it says here, you cannot serve God and mammon. You know, you cannot serve God, and you can't serve money. You can't look for money. He says, But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows, the Bible says. So we are not to be Christians that look forward to gaining money. Seek God first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things shall be added to you. God will take care of you. All right? And uh, Joshua 24, 15, and it, and it seemeth... And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You know, Joshua is drawing a line here that to the nation of Israel, like, which side do you want to be in? Are you going to serve God? Or are you going to serve the gods of this world? Are you going to serve God? Are you going to serve the gods of this world? Money, yourself, fame? Looking good to your friends, or are you going to serve God? All right, let's come back to Christ, and God will show you Himself strong to you. All right? It says this in Luke 9, and it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. 
And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds have, of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury the dead. But go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And also, another, another, also, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first bid go them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. So Jesus Christ is using obviously a strong um, analogy that if you want to serve me, there is a sacrifice. You know, that's why the Bible says in Romans 12, you know, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It says here in Luke, though, that um, you know, there is uh, a cost to serving God, but it's either, it's either going to be the cost of this world or the cost of your spiritual life. You know, I don't want uh, my family, you know, thinking it's hard to serve God. You know, the way of the transgressor is hard, the Bible says. It's, so what's it going to be? Are you going to serve God or this world? Are you going to serve and, and, and forsake things of this world? Or are you going to serve the things of this world and forsake things of God? You can't have it both ways. And that's why God is saying here, you know, there is a bit of, uh, if, you, if you're going to serve me, there's going to be some sacrifice. There's going to be some uh, things that you're going to compromise on. But I don't want to compromise on my spirituality to serve this world. I'm going to serve God. Uh, my, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Yeah. Right? Amen. So let's be like that as Christians, that we choose to serve God. All right? So it says, For which cause we faint not, but though the outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, the Bible says, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding weight, an eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So as Christians, you know, we are laboring here in this world. Um, but, you know, one day we'll have things eternal. You know, there's another Christian group I meet with and there's... Uh, my son pointed out to me that there was a guy uh, that had a, uh, a steel leg from his knee below. And um, I was curious to know what his story was. And I found out he used to go to my school and he was sports. He was a rugby player, a football player rather. He was really keen and passionate about it. He was trying to get into you know, first grade. And he's a pretty big, um, pretty, pretty big guy. And so I was like, hey, you know, what's the story of your, of your, of your leg? And he's like, you know, um, yeah, I, I, had, I found I had cancer on my knee. And so um, when I went to the hospital, I just started, you know, it was, it was actually good for me that um, that's what led him to getting saved. You know, he, he, at that moment in his life, he started to seek out God. He's like, you know, God, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, but, you know, if you help me through this, um, you know, I'll, I'll turn to you. And, um, you know, that's not always going to be the case for everyone where we're going to find that low. But in his case, you know, his knee, he thanked, he thanked God for it. He's like, you know what? I didn't care about football anymore. I didn't care about the light affliction of my leg. I got saved. I'm a servant of God now. And I see that guy soul winning, you know. I see this guy on Thursdays. He's going out, handing out tracks and trying to tell people of God. You know? For him, it's his light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. You know, we're looking for things uh, eternal. All right, so the last point I want to bring here, just as we close up, uh, where we ought to recharge. Uh, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and learning heart, and you shall find rest in your souls. So, as, as Christians in this end of um, the year, we, we pray, don't always forget to pray. We reflect on God, we submit to God. Uh, we're putting God first, basically, in our lives, uh, and don't zone out. Uh, but in here, for I am meek and learning in heart, Christ is uh, meek and learning. We ought to be humble, we ought to be meek and learning, you know, quiet, humble spirit, working hard says about Moses, now that the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. So Moses, obviously he made excuses that he couldn't speak. And I guess probably partially why the Bible says here that he was very meek. But we do know in Acts that he was able to you know, speak in the terms of um, to, to Pharaoh, but he was just a bit, um, he was just trying to make excuses to God. All right, so, but God says here in, in Psalm 149, uh, for, for the Lord taketh pleasure in his people, he will beautify the meek with salvation. You know, not the beauty of this world, not the beauty of, um, you know, worldliness, but with salvation. God takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. You know, one day we will have, uh, you know, we, we have mansions. We have things in eternal, you know, rather than this world. You know, we, have, we buy things that only last two or three years. 
we, we get that, you, you get that warranty, two year warranty, and then, you know, the month after two years, is sometimes it breaks. You know, it won't be like the case in heaven, you know. We will have, uh, with salvation, we have great things in heaven. And, um, and if we're meek, we ought to be like Christ, you know. Christ is meek and lowly, we ought to be like Him. Psalm 138, 6, Though the Lord be high, yet hath He respect unto the lowly, but the proud He knoweth afar off. Alright, so once again, as Christians, we ought not to be proud, as we saw earlier. He hath respect unto the lowly. You know, the respect, remember if you see, uh, if you remember back to Abel and Cain, God had respect unto Abel, because Abel was rep actually re representing what Jesus was going to be, and Cain was representing his works. And we ought not to be like that as Christians. We always ought to always go back to Christ, thinking and reflecting upon Him and submitting to Him. All right? Um, we did read Proverbs 16, 18, but let's jump to verse 19. But better it is to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. So the, quick, uh, the thing I want to draw from this is, um, you know, if you've heard the term sore losers or sore winners, right? Sometimes you lose, you're like, oh man, that team's trash. We should have won. You become a sore loser. Um, or even a soul winner, you know, sometimes you, you get you get so proud You know, it says here to, to divide the spoil with the proud um, the, There's one commercial that always got me and it spoke about the um, You know, there is times when you're down, right? Uh, it's about when Michael Jordan. He had so many cool commercials in the 90s uh, I like basketball, so I always like to draw from him, but there's the one commercial and I don't know how exact phrases But he says, you know, I've lost over 900 games of um, I've played, more, I've played uh, X amount of, of games, I've lost so many games, uh, about 20 odd times he's, he's been tasked to take the game winning shot and he missed. And then the, the punchline is, I, and sorry, I failed over and over and over again. And that is why I succeed. So, you know, sometimes it is better to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. You know, we see jo Michael Jordan, he's arguably the best a basketball player of all time, but he had that mindset, you know, I've, I may lose, but I'm going to rise up again thanks to God, you know. So, closing up here, the verse 30, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So, you work for God, or are you going to work for the world? When you find out in the end, you know, working for God is actually easier. You know, we only have a short time on earth. It says in John 5, 1 John 5, verse 3 onwards, for this is the love of God that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. So, you probably know that, that um, a popular guy in media recently, uh, Andrew Tate, you know, he's always explaining that like, you've got to escape the matrix, you know, as people, we've got to find a way out of this matrix. And it's just funny how he says that. But, you know, as Christians, if you've Serve God, you believe His command, you serve, you keep His commandments, His commandments are not grievous. And you have this mindset on you that whosoever, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. As Christians, I'd say we would have escaped the matrix. We've overcome the world. Yeah. You know, we don't have to worry about what the world has. And that's why it says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When you serve God, it's actually easier. And remember earlier I said, for the way of the transgressor is hard. If you're going against God, you know, that's the hard life. You know, I don't know what it's like to be an unbeliever. But man, I just can't, I can't imagine, you know, waking up day by day that one day I will die and nothing will ha there's going to be nothing. But as believers, we know we're saved, we've overcome the world. And what power that, what, that God has given us, you know, aren't we glad that we can go to God and be strengthened that way? It says this in John 16, 33, these things have I spoken to you. Then in me, you might have peace, in the world yet you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So we will face tribulation, we will face trials, but the Bible says, be of good cheer. Jesus Christ has overcome the world. That is the, sir, that is the master we serve today. He has overcome. He knows what you're going through. And that's why we ought to be of good cheer. You know, we're serving, going through hard times. Whatever tribulation trials you have, continue serving God. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Mm -hmm. So that's why it says in 2 Corinthians 12, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. So Paul, you know, going through all these troubles and trials in his life, he's saying, you know, when I am weak, I'm strong. When he's going through all these hard times, 
You know, when you're serving God and you're going through hard times, you know, that's when you're actually strong spiritually. That's what the Bible says. Um, continuing on, Philippians 4 says, I know both how to be base and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed, both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. So if you're working and serving through God, that's why we know in Matthew, it says, for my yoke it is easy and my burden is light. Because God is doing the heavy lifting. He's, he's doing the hard work. When we're yoked with Him, He's the ox that's plowing harder than we are. It's His work that works through us. And we, have it, we would have it easy. And last verse I want to show you, it says, Being confident in this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So let's not forget that you are saved this morning, that God is willing, willing to work for you, work with you. If 2023 wasn't that strong case for you spiritually, let's get back to God. Let's start seeking God. You know, it's not going to be, in a sense, uh, rose, bed of roses and, and uh, daisy raisy, but you know, we serve God, we find that it's actually easier. Now, being confident is the very thing that He which hath done a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So let's seek God this end of the year and even throughout the, the rest of our lives, not just 2024, but let's go back to God. We pray, we reflect on God, we submit to God, and be recharged when we get back to God. Right? So that's the ending here. So let's close in prayer. Dear God, I just thank you, Lord, for the word that we can open to it and uh, we can learn from it and um, that your Holy Spirit will guide us and lead and guide us to all truth. And I pray um, as we close this year, obviously we remember that you came to seek and to save that which is lost. But I pray that we um, uh, be not weary in well-doing. We always work hard. We read the Bible. We pray. We come to you, Lord, and not to uh, be about with a hard attitude of spirit. We need to come back to you. We need to get back to basics, the old paths, and we need to serve you. So we thank you for what you've done for us that you died on the cross, you were buried and rose again, you were bruised for our iniquities, and by your stripes we are healed. Lord, you went through so much for us, and I pray that we ought to be uh, living a um, sacrificial life, Lord, that uh, we ought to be living um, a godly Christian life, to die to ourselves daily and take up our cross. Thank you for your word, thank you for salvation. I ask all these things in Jesus' name, amen.